Old Testament to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, the first verse. Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Beginning with verse number one. Deuteronomy 28. Beginning with verse one. And I will be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Deuteronomy 28 verse one reads as follows. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, yes, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket, and your needy bowl. Blessed shall, blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The word of the Lord is blessed. For a few moments, on this morning, I want to talk to you from the subject, the overlooked reality. The overlooked Beatitudes. My God. Yes, sir. And I want you to understand that the name Deuteronomy derives from the Greek word second law. In fact, Deuteronomy emphasizes that its laws are not new laws but rather the preaching of the original law given to Israel at Sinai. I'm just giving you some history. The theme of Deuteronomy, we understand, is the last installment of Moses' biography. It contains his last three sermons and two prophetic poems about Israel's future. Reflecting on the nation's past mistakes, he urges the people not to repeat those mistakes when entering the promised land. Amen. The purpose of Deuteronomy is that it's largely a sermon or a set of sermons written to motivate Israel to maintain her faithfulness. Uh -huh. All right, now. I want you, Hope Missionary Baptist Church, to be a church yeah. that strives to maintain her faithfulness. Amen. Deuteronomy also urges faithfulness and obedience to God's law that was given at Sinai. Well. The theology of Deuteronomy is focused on convincing Israel to trust God, yeah. yes, to obey God, yeah. and conquer the land. Yes, I can take my seat on that point yes, because I want to encourage you today yes, to trust God, yeah. yes, to obey God, yeah. and be ready to conquer the land. Yes, the theme of this passage is there is blessedness 
in our obedience to what God has to say. I'm going to say it one more time. There's blessedness in our obedience. Let me throw this in parenthetically. There's our blessedness in our dancing. The blessedness is rooted and grounded in our obedience to the true and living God. And I want us to understand today that God has a purpose for your life. No matter what you're going through. No matter what it looks like, God has a purpose. Even if it's dark. Even if it's gloomy. God has you here, up in here, for a purpose. Hallelujah. Come on, stop. You see, God, he honors our obedience. Not our good intentions. And I want you to understand that the assignment, Brother Slater, is not always going to be easy. Amen. Amen. Folk are not always going to pat you on your back and tell you how great you are. But it is our mandate to fulfill the assignment, no matter what it looks like. See, your life. In the life of a servant. And we are all servants. Things may not always be what they seem. All right. There are many obstacles in the life of a believer. Physical obstacles and spiritual ones. And we have to deal with these obstacles on a regular basis. Do I got a church up in here? A disciple of Jesus Christ has to be in tune with God. That simply means, Ray, that we need to be walking in right relationship with him day in and day out. As disciples, we must learn to navigate our own lives and our own shortcomings and learn to navigate the personalities that we are called to serve. See, as servants of the true and living God, we are called to deal with behaviors in love. In love. That are a direct result of the personalities we have been called to serve. Yes, the key word right there that we must deal with them yes. in, love. in love. I don't care if they get on your nerves. Yes. Deal with them yes. in love. Yes. I don't care if they talk about you and call you everything but a child of God. It is our mandate. To deal with them in love. I don't care if they don't say amen when you preach it. Our mandate is to deal with them in love. I'm going to go down the list. I don't care if they don't like the way you handle the money. Your mandate is to deal with them in love. I don't care what they say about how you handle the temporal. Our mandate is to deal with one another in love. And as a servant, dealing with folk in love, we have to navigate through the truth. All right. We have to navigate through untruth. Mm -hmm. We have to navigate through the assumptions to get to the root of the problem so we can take it to the Lord in prayer. So let me throw this here parenthetically. Our job is to pray for them, not pray on them. Somebody missed that. We should be a church that is praying, not praying. 
All right. All right. In this new normal, we can't do things the way that we used to do them. We can't have traditional church anymore. We can't pray on each other secretly by saying we're praying on you publicly. It is time for us to change how we do church up in here. When it is time for the people of God to stop just wearing badges and be the people of God. If we're going to do that, Deacon White, we must learn to diligently listen to the voice of the Lord. All right. That means we got to spend some time praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Ray. And when we pray, we got to learn to listen. Too many times we want to be heard. We want God to meet our needs. We want him to do what we want him to do. But then we up. Amen. When we should be sitting there listening for what he wants us to do. Amen. So we must learn, Dick and White, to diligently listen. Listen. And when we diligently listen, we must have a dedication. And the commitment. All right. Yes, Come on. Not to the building we call church. Mm -hmm. But to the church, which is Christ's body. Amen. And we must faithfully obey. This is not just a requirement for those that God has called to leadership. Amen. All right. Amen, lights. Amen. It's not just a call for the leaders. Amen. It is a mandate. Let me rewind that. It's a biblical mandate for all of those who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. This tells me that if we're going to be effective for kingdom building, we must be determined to live for Christ. And one who is determined to live for Christ, Deacon Grant, is a student of the Word of God. Not only on Thursdays, but on every day. So we must learn to faithfully listen. Yes, sir. In the text, in his responsibility, as a leader All right. and mediator, Moses had previously told the people about the promises of God's blessing and the warnings that they should not turn to other gods yeah. when the covenant was given at Sinai. Yeah. My brothers and my sisters, we must learn. Yeah. To put God first. Yeah. Yeah. Because there must be no other gods before him. Yeah. Point to yourself, say, not even me. Because many times we are the God that comes before him. Many times we are the God, little G, little O, little D. That we put before capital G, right, capital O, capital D. All right. Amen. Amen. But we must learn that we have to take a back seat. Hallelujah. To our Lord and our Savior. But as we move forward in the text, after the rebellion against the covenant, the, against that covenant, Moses warned them in Leviticus 26 of the divine judgment that would come if they disobeyed. Yes. 
Here Moses gives an exhortation based upon the blessings and the curses of the covenant. In verses 1, 2, and 15, Moses clearly explained that the quality of Israel's future experiences would come on the basis of their obedience or their disobedience. All right. Let me pause there. Somebody needs to hear this on today, the quality of our future. Our future experiences Amen. are tied closely to our obedience Amen. or disobedience yes, yes, to God. Hallelujah. And when I'm talking about obedience, I'm not talking about what you think the Bible says. All right. Or what somebody told you the Bible says. Yeah. You've got to get to know it for yourself. For the blessing fulfillment to diligently obey, stress the need for Israel to completely depend on God. And we as the people of God, Deacon and Simpson, we must depend solely on God. Yeah. With that said, what is the priority? of the believer in times like these. What is it that we should do when we face difficulty? What is it we should do in the good times and the bad times? Point number one, we have to have a desire to obey God. Amen. To obey, if you don't know, is to, is to follow the commands or guidance of God in every situation. People may not always agree with you. Follow the guidance of God. People may not always like you, but follow the guidance of God. Yeah. Everybody is not going to understand your relationship with God, but follow I know the guidance of God. Yes, Some folks are not going to want to deal with you, even in the church, but you must continue to follow the guidance of God. People will mistreat you in Jesus' name, but you must continue to follow the guidance of God. Do I have a church up in here that is committed to following the guidance of God? See, Deuteronomy chapter 4 teaches us we obey because it is what God commands. We obey so we can live. We obey because we know we are about to receive a greater anointing. We obey because we want to display God's wisdom and knowledge to a dying world. We obey because God is taking us to the next level of blessedness. So there must be a desire to obey. But before we move forward, Samuel, Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings and sacrifice or your obedience to his voice? Listen, I want you to hear this church. Your obedience is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah. And submission yes, is better than offering the fat of rams. Yes, I'm going to keep going. Rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft. Yes, and stubbornness yes, is as bad as worshiping idols. Right. We must have a desire yes. to obey. Yes, but not only yes. must we have a desire to obey. Yes, sir. Sister Joyce, we have to have a desire to worship. Yeah. In John chapter 4, verses 21 through 24, Jesus said to her, 
woman. Believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain or in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you don't know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But an hour is coming. Yes, and, it, and now is when true worshipers must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. For such people, yes, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. Mm -hmm. We have to worship God in spirit and in truth. That simply means we got to give God everything that we got. Even when we're tired, we got to give God everything we got. When we don't feel good at all, we got to give God everything we got. Yeah. With hurt feelings, with a broken heart, we got to give God everything we got. Yeah. And let me give you this definition. I always give the definition of worship. Worship. Is praising God Hallelujah. for who he is yes, while thanking him for what he has done. Yes. All served on a bed of obedience. Hallelujah. Point number one, we must have a desire to obey. That's right. Point number two, we must have a desire to worship. Yes, but last but not least, we must have a desire to walk in right relationship with him. Come on. Micah 6 verse 8 states, he has shown you, oh man, okay. what is good. Yeah. Yeah. And Hope Missionary Baptist Church, what does the Lord require of us? But to do justice. Amen. Love mercy. Yeah. And walk humbly with our God. Lord. Our requirements, HMBC, friends and family, is to live right. Yeah. To love right. Yeah. And to walk right. Yeah. Understand, when we are walking in right relationship with God. We are known by the weight we take. Amen. We are known by the company that we keep. Yeah. And in the end, when we get to heaven or hell, because hell is real, we cannot come back. So it behooves us All right. to have a desire yeah. to obey. It behooves us mm -hmm. to have a spirit of worship. It behooves us yeah. to walk in right relationship with him. Yes, so HMBC on today, continue to walk in obedience and faithfulness. Right. Continue to worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. And continue to walk in right relationship with him. Yeah. If we desire Hallelujah. To be servants of the true and living God, we have to learn yeah. to wait on the Lord. Yeah. If we want a peace that surpasses all understanding, yeah. wait on the Lord. Yeah. If we desire a greater anointing, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. If we desire to be more effective in our ministries, wait on the Lord. The psalmist says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. If you have patience, the Lord will build you up. If you have patience, the Lord will bless your soul. If you have patience, the Lord will show up. If you have patience, the Lord will fix it. If you have patience, the Lord will raise you up. If you have patience, 
patience. The Lord will be your comfort. If you have patience, the Lord will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. In the presence of your haters. In the presence of your naysayers. I will trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord until I die. So the Catholic way, I will trust him when I'm down. I will trust him when I'm up. I will trust him when I'm sick. I will trust him when I'm broke. I will trust him when I'm all alone. I will trust him at the cemetery. Desire to obey. 